Due to mature subject matter, viewer discretion is advised. Investigators are trying to figure out what prompted a man to start shooting at police in Hackensack. Any crime involving law enforcement, we take it a little more personally, especially when somebody's being shot at. A police shootout leaves a paroled inmate in the hospital with 14 bullet wounds. And two other men are arrested for the connection to him. I mean, I didn't shoot the cop, but I sold the gun. He had this thought and his head that he wanted to, to kill himself. Suicide by police, basically. Oh, look at her hair. A female inmate arrives with what she says is a hair salon mishap. That process, like, chemically didn't work with me. My hair fell out. No. But officers suspect something else. Yeah, that'll be a good story. Oh, yeah, there's got to be a story behind oh, that. Oh, definitely. Though the New York City skyline is visible from some parts of town, Hackensack, New Jersey, is a smaller, quieter city of about 43,000. But like its giant neighbor, it attracts visitors from all over. And that's especially apparent at an imposing landmark just outside downtown, the Bergen County Jail. North Carolina, baby. We gotta, we gotta get a it. We got, we got the dirty south of here, North dirty, Carolina. Dirty. Yeah. Ain't Trent. nobody that's in this county from this county. No, that's no. crazy. I'm from Trent, New Jersey. Ready to go home. Been here too long. 65% of our population are out of county residents. A lot of them are for drugs. Whether they're going into the city or coming out, they're getting pulled over. Uh, they use Bergen County because it's artery of highways down the eastern seaboard. So a lot of those individuals are incarcerated here. Most of the roughly 900 inmates housed here have been accused of crimes and are awaiting trial or the resolution of their cases. Like many, Deanna Collins is not only from somewhere else, Philadelphia. She's also facing drug charges, but she's unique in another way. And what happened to your hair? Uh, really? <laughs> it was a process, and it fell out. It's it was horrible. a process? Yeah, chemical just fell out. <laughs> At the beauty parlor? Yeah. Um, I had a chemical treatment. I was supposed to be doing body wave and changing my hair color, and they ended up singeing off my hair. like this, I look like such a scumbag, and I look like such a, like, not the kind of person that you want to pull for. <laughs> Looks like it hurts. It does. It hurts my pride. It hurts everything. <laughs> Colin says things got worse soon after. She was arrested on multiple counts of obtaining prescription drugs through fraud, distributing prescription drugs, and forgery. She has pled not guilty, but admits to having done some of the things for which she is charged and to battling addiction. Prescription painkillers. They were my biggest thing, oxycodone. Um, when I couldn't get that, heroin. But I never shot it, I always just snorted it. Colin says she was coerced by a drug dealer to use stolen doctor prescription pads in order to obtain oxycodone from pharmacies in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. Barely see myself in that. I'll walk in there as if I have something that's legitimate, and it's not. And then they fill it. They give it to me because they trust me, and I walk out. Why do they trust you? I'm nice and sweet and pretty, normally. <laughs> but it's something that, uh, you know, I'm not proud of or anything at all. Collins says she sold some of the pills and swallowed the rest. This is her first time in jail. She is currently in A Block, a temporary housing unit for new inmates. Their backgrounds must be reviewed by the jail's classification team in order to assign them to an appropriate housing unit. They can either classify me as C or D. C is maximum, D is minimum. Um, I don't know what the categorical processes of that is, but hopefully I don't go to C, because C is more the quote-unquote hardened criminals of the female world, I guess. Uh, I don't seem to think that I'm that, but I guess I'll find out. All right, Dana Collins. This is the first time she's been in our jail. Um, 
She's got quite a few charges, a few out-of-county and out-of-state charges as well, all pretty much for the same thing of obtaining CDS by fraud. Quite a few, actually. We have one, two, three, about 15 with one town alone, three with another town, but then she also has some out-of-county here. She is wanted out of Pennsylvania. Oh, look at her hair. Officers have seen this look before, usually on suspects charged with scamming pharmacies, just as Collins has been. Probably shaved it. So maybe when she went to the pharmacy to obtain the drug, she put her hair up, made it look like she was sick, perhaps losing her hair, maybe chemotherapy. Interesting. We'll have to ask her about that when we go see her. Classification is an ongoing process at the jail, as new inmates arrive every day. Today, they include Jerry Nunez on the left and Sean Stark on the right. Arrested within hours of each other, they have been connected to a shootout with Hackensack police two days earlier. The investigators are trying to figure out what prompted a man to start shooting at police in Hackensack. Officers say the man was walking with a gun and opened fire on a cop car, barely missing the officer inside. The shots caused another patrol car to rear end the first car. Both officers jumped out, returned fire. They chased the gunman to the corner of 1st and Sussex Street. That gunman has since been identified as 22-year-old Robert Leonardis. He's in the hospital in critical condition tonight. Robert Leonardis received a total of 14 bullet wounds. He has been charged with several crimes, the most serious being three counts of attempted murder. Face the camera right here in the open, no more. Stark was not arrested for any direct involvement in the shooting, but because he owned the unregistered handgun Leonardis allegedly used to shoot at police. He says Leonardis is a good friend and had taken the weapon without him knowing it. He had came over my house and we were hanging out that night and um, he had this thought and his head that he wanted to, to kill himself, basically take his own life. I talked to him about that this is not his last chance. There are things that he can do to better his life. But that night that he was over my house, he took my gun. It's basically how it got from my possession to his possession. I never thought that he would shoot at a police officer or even, it's just, uh, I don't know, I have no, really no, no words. So right here? Right here. Though Stark is not accused of being involved in the shooting, he still faces a serious charge. Simply due to the fact that he owned the gun used in the shooting, he has been charged with possession of a handgun while committing a crime. He says he will plead not guilty when he goes before the judge. Hello? I've been trying to call your phone. Why aren't you picking up? If found guilty, Stark could face up to 20 years in prison. But for now, he turns to his girlfriend for support. Listen, okay. They, they hit me with possession of the, the firearm and shooting that officer, babe. You have to give me a look. I'm serious. You have to see what lawyer can come here and talk to me ASAP because I'm going to lose my mind and please promise me that you, you'll be faithful to me <laughs> they're gonna smoke me for this and i do not deserve to be in prison <laughs> meanwhile jerry nunez who says he sold the unregistered gun to stark for 500 dollars is settling into his new cell it's crazy right just last night i was watching lock up on tv now i'm on lock up for real Woke up this morning to banging on the door, and uh, it turns out to be detectives from the Bergen, Bergen County Prosecutor's Office. And um, they wanted to speak with me. They had questions uh, with uh, a shooting of a cop. I mean, I didn't shoot the cop, but I sold the gun. And um, that's why I'm here. No towel, nothing. Don't come to this hotel, guys. They don't got ready for you. Though Nunez was investigated for his connection to the gun, law enforcement authorities have yet to issue any weapons charges. When they came into my house, they did like a little search. They were looking for guns. And um, all they found was a pot, pot of weed and like 70 grams of bath salt. And 
That's about it. Nunez was only charged with drug possession, to which he plans to plead not guilty. But he believes prosecutors are building a case against him related to the police shooting. I just regret it, you know what I mean? It's not even worth it. Trade in a 45 caliber, $500 for a 10 foot, 10, what is it, nine by seven? And now in jail for less than four hours, Nunez faces another demon, drug withdrawal. I mean, I have a bad addiction with painkillers. Tomorrow I'm gonna be feeling it. It'll probably wake me up in the morning. Throwing up, puking, sweating. I kind of feel sweaty right now. <laughs> Coming up. We'll tell you that first time, we'll tell you that second time. A third time, we'll put your stuff out on the gate, and you gotta go. Jerry Nunez receives a warning. Then... You're telling me that bald head there wasn't to put a bandana to go into a pharmacy? No, not at all. Deanna Collins faces skepticism about her hair story. Inside the Bergen County Jail, it has been a difficult first night for two men connected to a handgun used in a shootout with Hackensack police officers three days earlier. Jerry Nunez says withdrawal from painkillers has caused frequent vomiting. I'm just trying to stay positive, sleep it off. Every now and then throw up. Just let it out, drink a lot of water, that's all I can do. Though Nunez has had a brief stay in jail before this, his cellmate Santos Roman believes he needs a refresher course in jailhouse etiquette. He don't live like that. He can't come in here and throw up, not flush the toilets. The way the bunk is made, we can't have that. So you know about the bunk, right? You can't leave like that all the time. You gotta fix it nice and neat. Do you see how mine is made? Uh, make, make the bed. The bed, you gotta make the bed. You do that every morning. Ten times you go in that bed, ten times you get up, ten times you fix it. I mean, we don't have that. When you, like, you just use the bathroom, you gotta flush it. Yeah, you gotta flush it. I was told you flushed it, but it didn't go all the way down, so you gotta make sure that it all goes all the way down. I mean, we got all the types of germs. We got all types of bacteria here. We got MRSA. We got staph infections. We got all that type of stuff. We'll tell you that first time. We'll tell you that second time. A third time, we'll put your stuff out on the gate, and you gotta go. Follow simple rules. Our rules, inmate rules, you don't disrespect nobody, you don't step on nobody's toes, you're good. Thanks, I love you. Appreciate it. All right. Though Nunez was only arrested on drug charges, he admits selling an unregistered handgun to Sean Stark, who also just completed his first night here. Stark was arrested because the gun he purchased was allegedly used by his friend, Robert Leonardis, to shoot at police officers. Yesterday, I was just emotionally distraught, and uh, the fear of not knowing what's going to happen to me or who's going to be there for me was was very hard. My mind was uh, all over the place, but um, yeah, I've gotten a lot calmer, and uh, my head's in the right place. Because of their connections to the high-profile case, Stark and Nunez were immediately placed in separate maximum security housing units. Most other new inmates were assigned to a temporary unit until the jail's classification team can determine the most appropriate housing placement. Deanna Collins has been in the female pre-classification unit for two weeks now. We have women in here who have done everything from kill their kids to kill other people to just have a littering violation. Loud, obnoxious. I may have done something wrong, but I don't really feel like I should be here. I just feel like I should be maybe house arrest or, or maybe probation or something. You gotta see the one that we're gonna see today. Is that the one with the hair? Yeah, that'll be a good story. Oh, yeah. There's gotta be a story behind oh, that. Oh, definitely. You know that it's for like sure. It's like you shaved <laughs> Yeah. That's definitely done on purpose. Oh, yeah. that. Classification officers Pichota and Weiland will interview Collins before determining whether to place her in minimum, medium, or maximum security. Collins says her hair loss was due to a salon mishap. But the officers have their own suspicions. Good morning, how are you? I'm good. Collins? Yes. Okay, we're just from classification unit. We just got to ask you a couple quick questions, all right? What happened to your head? I was at a salon in Philadelphia. 
And I was getting my hair colored because I wanted to go blonde so I could get away from people. <laughs> and uh, I was just getting the color process going and then I was doing body waves and the chemical process that they put on my hair. I reached up when I was in the hood and my head just like, all my hair fell out. It looks like you shaved just the front of it because it's like a perfect line. They put the rollers just like that. And then when I reached up, the rollers just came right out. And I was like, and all my hair was still on them and I was screaming, I was so mad. This I is right before hair. you got locked up? Right before. And this was no like type of pharmacy scam, nothing like that. No, nothing no. that this wasn't was, part of the plan. No. The drug you're using, what is it normally used for? Um, just cancer patients. Um, yeah, I think so. I'm not really sure. And you're telling me that bald head there wasn't to put a bandana to go into a pharmacy? No, not at all. Since her arrest, other law enforcement agencies in New Jersey and Pennsylvania have issued warrants for Collins after matching her mugshot to surveillance footage of possible pharmacy scammers. You're all over the map here. Yeah. Maple Shade. That's far. Florham Park. Mm -hmm. All over and the you place. just didn't ever think about just continuing going and just leaving New the Milford. area? New Milford. I want... 100% leaving the area I, and just course. starting fresh. I want, more than anything, I want a house with my fiancé to have kids and be done with this stuff. That's all I want. It's so bad. Did you get arrested and they released you from these places? Yeah. Or they're popping up. Brother forgot you, and then all these towns say, yeah, we got something on her, too, and they're dropping. That's, what's that's how it's at. All right, so they didn't arrest you on these charges. And how many other towns yeah, did you hit? A lot. Yeah. Oh, boy. So this list, this is just going to keep on going. You're going to come out as a max, maximum security. You're going to go to maximum security wing. I don't know what else is going to fall on you as far as charges. It seems like stuff is coming in by the minute on you. You know, all the drug related charges. But the main reason that you're going to be in maximum security is because you have the fugitive warrant. So it gives us a reason to believe if you had the chance to get out of here, take off, and make a run for it, you, you're going to do it. I mean, you seem like a pretty normal person overall, mm -hmm. you know? That's why I'm just... You got a long life ahead of you. You know, you don't, you still have time. Time's on your side, you know, but. I'm done with all that stuff. Shortly after the hearing, Collins is told to gather her belongings and is moved to maximum security. I think there's more to that story than she's leading on, obviously. I think there's more with the hair there. The beauty salon thing sounds good. But she's filling fake prescriptions, cancer medications at pharmacies. You know, I'm, I'm not a mathematician, but two and two is four. You know what I mean? Coming up, Deanna Collins tries to adjust to life in Max and receives a surprise visitor. She was caught on the surveillance camera, and we were able to get a good picture of her hairstyle. And the shooting in Hackensack was very unusual. Very rarely have we had anybody come in here, if, if ever, for shooting at a cop. The Hackensack police shooting becomes the talk of the jail. Hackensack is a peaceful, quiet town. The last time we had a shooting in Hackensack was 12 years ago. Behind the walls of the Bergen County Jail, much of the talk over the past week has had to do with an inmate who has yet to step foot inside. Hackensack police say 22-year-old Robert Leonardis opened fire on three of their patrol officers, barely missing one of them. Police returned fire, hitting Leonardis a total of 14 times. Now charged with three counts of attempted murder, Leonardis is still recovering in a local hospital, but his presence is felt in other ways. Y'all heard about this? He should have killed the cop. <laughs> I hate when a shoot at a cop and don't kill him. You're gonna get the same amount of time as you damn missed. Hackensack is a peaceful, quiet town. You can't I... come. The last time we had a shooting in Hackensack was 12 years ago. <laughs> the shooting in Hackensack was very unusual. Very rarely have we had anybody come in here, if, if ever, for shooting at a cop anyway. I mean, I hate that they shoot regular people, but now they're shooting at cops. Their status is greater than what it would have been if they just shot one of their homies on the street. Two other inmates being held in connection to the shootout say they would trade their current status for freedom in a heartbeat. 
One of them, Sean Stark, has just run into an old friend here. Wait, the, the Haggis Egg? The Haggis Egg shooting. What? That was the gun? Yeah. Holy f Are you serious? Where did it go down? Stark wasn't involved in the shooting, but is charged with possession of a handgun while committing a crime because he owned the gun Leonardis allegedly used to shoot at police. Yeah, they shot him up. He's still alive, but... Oh, is he, he's in, he's in what, Hackensack? Yeah, he's in the hospital with count, county police officers babysitting him. Yeah. Two million dollar bail. Damn. That's <sighs> up. Stark purchased the unregistered gun from another inmate being held at the jail, Jerry Nunez. The prosecutor's office came to my house. It was like 15 detectives, bro. They were like, you sold the gun to a guy? And he shot the cop. And I was like, oh. Nunez was originally arrested on drug possession charges. But as he suspected they would, prosecutors have just filed the same charge against him that they have against Stark. Possession of a handgun while committing a crime. How much your bill? Uh, 250,000. 250, a quarter million? Oh, you got a pay million? You got any money saved? Like 10 oh. years, bro. That's probably gonna all be gone. You'll be all right, man. You need something, call me, all right? All right, I got you. Stark says Leonardo stole the gun from him, and the shootout was really a failed attempt at suicide. Now, I feel like he had the gun out for somebody to see him with the gun, so they could have called the police on him, so the police would have came and he would have tried to die like that, suicide by police, basically. Until their cases are resolved, Stark and Nunez will be kept apart from each other. The biggest reason for it is you don't want a group of people, whether it's one or two or more, um, getting together and kind of conjuring up their story, getting their story straight. You could really help a case get nailed down by keeping them away from one another. There's another reason as well. Nunez now blames Stark for his current problems, and the jail doesn't want any conflicts. I sold him my gun, and he gave it to somebody else that was not supposed to ever have it. I gave it to him. And I told him, this is yours, don't give it to nobody else, that's it. So I feel like he kind of betrayed me. If found guilty, Nunez could face significant prison time. And some here believe... That boy is toast. He gonna smoke his ass like a pack of Newports. Say your prayers. That boy ain't coming home to cars start flying in the air. <laughs> True story. Coming up. The nature of the, uh, this involves allegedly crimes against police officers. Judges look at that as sometimes the most heinous type of crimes. Jerry Nunez lawyers up, and the alleged Hackensack police shooter leaves the hospital and is booked into the jail. Due to mature subject matter, viewer discretion is advised. Twenty-six-year-old Deanna Collins came to the Bergen County Jail on multiple charges of using fraudulent means to obtain and distribute prescription drugs. One of her worst fears, assignment to the maximum security unit, was recently realized. Honestly, it's more of just what I've heard when I was on the outside about, you know, maximum security prisons and stuff. Just, you know, crazy girls who just, you know, go and kill people or, you know. I heard horror stories from before I got here about girls who were getting in fights just to keep their soap. Okay, I'll try to slow it down. But so far, it's been a different sort of experience. Everybody's really, really nice. And we treat each other like a family. Oh, <laughs> Among other things, Collins has made new friends. Oh my god, and like, you know, I had this thing happen with my hair. Like, what happened? I was in a salon and I, that process, like, chemically didn't work with me. My hair fell out. No. Collins has even found a new stylist. No, that seriously is my new favorite song. Hey. And she's had lots of new experiences. I have never slept on a top bunk in my entire life. I've never been to camp. I went to a day camp for a day. <laughs> I was a little too prissy for that, so they sent me home. I'm a girly girl. I don't play in the woods. I don't play in mud. <laughs> Women 
on the whole, like, to care about people. See, I actually was pretty. Oh, you still are. Shut up. <laughs> I mean, we are people still. We may have done some bad things, but we're still human beings. My hair fell out in the salon. $168 they wanted me to pay for this. She said that they gave me a $200 coupon for another service. I was like, Collins! But Collins' camp-like experience is suddenly interrupted. A detective from the nearby town of New Milford, New Jersey, has come by to book her on a new set of prescription drug fraud charges. Once again, it was her hair that got her in trouble. She was caught on the surveillance camera and we were able to get a good picture of her hairstyle. She's going back on booking, sir. Very unique, uh, very distinguishable. Uh, you don't see too many people with that type of style. Come on over here. Okay. That's one more stupid thing that I'm gonna have to deal with. Danny, you must have an idea of how many of this is gonna come to. Oh, I, I can't even put a number on it. I've done a town, I've been at one in every town. Maybe two. I mean... When there's a crime committed, there's a database system where you can put up security images or uh, surveillance photos, and you send it out to all the other towns within the state, county, whatever you want to send it to, and they sent out a picture of her, and we recognized her from our incident. Since Collins is already in custody, Detective Van Saders processes her for these new charges right at the Bergen County Jail, where she will remain until her current charges are resolved. And with outstanding warrants from other counties in New Jersey and Pennsylvania, Collins knows she could have similar visits in the future. I've done bad things in a lot of places. So they're finally catching on to my bad things. And they're issuing your warrants for my arrest. It's something that just breaks my heart every day. And it's something that only my face is on camera doing. <laughs> Over in the men's maximum security unit, Sean Stark is still dealing with the fact that if found guilty, he could spend decades in prison for a police shootout in which he was not directly involved. I'm stressing a lot. I don't know what's going on with my case. I went to court. They just read me my charges and then brought me back over here. Since he was the last known owner of the gun Robert Leonardis allegedly used to shoot at Hackensack police officers, Stark has been charged with possession of a handgun while committing a crime. His new cellmate, James George, has advice for him. Ah, you work on your case, that's first and foremost. Do not go to that courtroom and let them judges do whatever they want to do to you, because if you do, they will do. Go to that law library. Dawn is perfect when it comes to that. Go to the law library, listen, Dawn, this is what it is, this is what's going on. I need to read up on this. I need to find any loopholes in my case. I need to know what's going on. Don Breeden is the inmate advocate for the Bergen County Sheriff's Office. Hopefully you'd be able to contact them. Let them contact you, okay? Thank you. Have a good day. While not a lawyer, Breeden provides resources to inmates as they prepare their cases and often interacts on their behalf with family members, drug counselors, and attorneys. Sometimes I don't like the title so much because it sounds like I'm a, uh, in between the inmates and the officers, and I'm not. I actually want what the officers want, which is peace. I want peace for the inmates. I want peace for everybody. I just like to keep the anxiety down, <laughs> you know? Okay. Many of the inmates were very frustrated. Majority of them have public defenders, but they're not seeing their public defenders because they have lots of clients. They're feeling helpless. So this way, we allow them to participate in their own defense. Tell me what we need today. I need to check up on my case, similar cases that are similar to mine, to try to find any loopholes or, you know, see what kind of time I might be facing or... Okay. So... So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look up your charge, and then we'll look up some cases. Okay. And you can look through those brief synopses and see if anything you feel applies. Okay? <laughs> I work with their attorneys, um, you know, their public defenders, to help assist to get them to court, to get them outside, to wherever it is they need to go. Okay, this is a lot of information. Like I said before, take your time, all right? Don't look at it and go, ah, okay? Take your time. Some's gonna apply, some's not. Let it fly. 
All right. All right, I appreciate that. Okay. Thank you. Good luck to you. Nice meeting you. Thank okay. you. The gun that got Stark in trouble was sold to him by Jerry Nunez. Because of that, Nunez, like Stark, though not directly involved in the shooting, has also been charged with possession of a handgun while committing a crime. But unlike Stark, he has hired a private attorney to mount his defense. Jerry is a good kid that is caught up in an extremely bad situation. These charges can land Jerry in jail for many years. Worst case scenario, he could be in a facility for, for a decade. These are gun-related charges. The state of New Jersey has some of the toughest gun laws in our country. Officer, I'm here to see Jerry Nunes. Nunes. Nunes! I'm concerned for Jerry's, just his mental well-being right now. I have to keep him strong. Right now, they're presenting the evidence of the grand jury. Uh, I believe within the next week or two, the grand jury will come back with an indictment. The nature of, the, of this involves uh, allegedly crimes against police officers. Judges look at that as sometimes the most heinous type of crimes, you know, crimes against children, crimes against police officers. And they really hold that against me, though? I mean, I was had really nothing to do with it. I understand, and that's what we have to see, what the evidence is. They will try to stick it to each and every one of you with the most charges as possible. But remember, they've got to prove that charges. They've got the burden of proof. I know it's a waiting game. And the day's drag in here. You know, time waits for no one. It ticks along, but in here it drags. So you gotta, you got to really man up now and, you know, and hold your own. And don't break and stay strong, OK? Pisses me off. So we're all being held accountable for you know, his actions. But New Jersey state law is New Jersey state law, you know? All right. You hang in there, Joe. You're going to be okay, Thanks. buddy. Thanks for coming. Okay. If I'm guilty, I'm guilty. You know, I take a, the best deal they can give me, you know what I mean? Coming up. I had open wounds. I still do. Four times in my stomach, three times in my pelvic. Robert Leonardis speaks out. Then... I don't have to take it. I can rip it up. We don't have to take the plea. Deanna Collins makes a deal. But her judge has the final say. New inmates are booked into the Bergen County Jail in Hackensack every day of the week. Most will arrive in a police squad car. But today, one is driven into the compound by an ambulance from a nearby hospital. And due to the nature of his charges, Robert Leonardis's reputation has preceded him. At the end of the day, if you hear a fellow officer got shot at, it sticks with you. You know, you're going you're gonna to look at that guy differently than you would a guy here that's here for a parking ticket. Any crime involving law enforcement, we take a little more personally, uh, especially when somebody's being shot at. Well, you have to put your emotions aside. You can't let your emotions dictate what you do. So, I mean, yeah, you think about it, it affects you, but it's, you still have a job to do at the end. One month earlier, Leonardis was out on bail for a prior aggravated assault charge. Police say he shot at three Hackensack officers who fired back, hitting Leonardis 14 times. I shot my hand. I shot my arm. I'm still healing up. I'm still going through a lot of pain and uh, problems. I had open wounds. I still do. Four times in my stomach, three times in my pelvic. And then, um, I shot my head. Leonardis has pled not guilty to an array of charges, including three counts of attempted murder. There has been speculation that he was attempting suicide by cop. And Leonardis acknowledges having felt suicidal prior to being shot. I didn't want to live before. I didn't want to be here. I didn't like here. Here was not a good place for me. I was overwhelmed with a lot of things that was going on in my life. But now, I don't feel that way. I'm just happy I'm alive. I guess when you get shot so many times, and you see your life flash in front of you, you think about it, you appreciate your life more. 
I appreciate my life a lot more now. Something, I don't know, something spiritually must have happened the day I got shot. Leonardis agreed to be interviewed only in the presence of his attorney, Vinnie Basile. What kind of time are you facing with these charges? I'd, I'd rather address that. His case is not indicted yet. It's purely under investigation by myself and the prosecutor's office. But the legal process really hasn't gone forward with its normal speed due to his injuries. Why did you take this case, Vinny? This is going to be a tough case. <laughs> Had many difficult cases through the years. But there was something about it. I knew he was a troubled young man. Had not led an exemplary life. But I know his family very well. He's a fortunate young man for this wonderful family. So it's, it, it was never a question as to whether to take the case or not, as difficult as it may be. I'm grateful to have the best lawyer in town, in the state of New Jersey. It could be months or years before Leonardis's case is resolved in court. But now, Deanna Collins enters her courtroom with high hopes. She says her lawyer has gotten her a favorable plea deal on charges of fraudulently acquiring prescription drugs from pharmacies. The other charges against her will be dropped. It's now up to the judge to sign off. I don't have to take it. I can rip it up. Um, we don't have to take the plea. We can refer this to the grand jury and ultimately for trial. Do you want me to let you take this plea or should we refer this to the grand jury and ultimately for trial? I would like you to take the plea. I'll ask our assistant prosecutor, Mr. Patch, ready to move the plea. Thank you, Honor. State would so move accusation 1046-13. Your Honor, it is our understanding at this time the defendant will be pleading guilty to a single count, third-degree charge of obtaining CDS by fraud. Judge State is prepared to recommend time served as the date of this plea as a condition of probation. Once I accept this guilty plea, you're bound by it. You cannot change your mind. Do you understand that? I understand. This is a third-degree charge, which carries with it, had you gone to trial and been found guilty, between three and five years in state prison. Your attorney has been, has been able to negotiate a very, very favorable plea from a prosecutor that's been reasonable. And I'm satisfied, and I'll accept the guilty plea and find the defendant guilty. You'll be released today, ROR, no dollar amount, unless something else is holding you. I understand. Thank you very much. I have to go with the officers Thank at this time. Thank you. With Collins' plea accepted by the judge, her time in the Bergen County Jail is coming to an end. Nothing good is going to happen. This is great. I mean, I was, I was listening in the courtroom, but I wasn't because I was so happy. Well, what does it mean about all the other cases you did? They were all ran together, and uh, I was only um, uh, charged with one, one case, and the rest were dismissed. All the other counties? All the other counties were dismissed. What? Coming up. <laughs> they said I was going to be on the streets well, today. I'm happy for you. I'm happy for you. Deanna Collins' future comes into focus. Or does it? Okay. I'm not going to know. That's for I'm a little fishy about this. Yeah, I'm I'm sound fishy about this. Okay. Okay. Deanna Collins has returned to the Bergen County Jail from her court appearance, where she received a sentence of probation and time already served for fraudulently acquiring prescription drugs from local pharmacies. She expects to be released in a matter of hours. What's going through your mind right now? <laughs> That's what's going through my mind. And I'm wondering what I came in here in, and I'm remembering it was a dress. Collins must return to the Women's Maximum Security Unit until officers have received official notice to release her. into one and everything else was dismissed. Well, you made so much better than my dad. Who's your lawyer? His name's Gamberg. Oh. Oh, well, let me speak to Gamberg. <laughs> you better send 
him a nice little present. No, oh, I will. Give me an ER. I'm Send some off. fruit arrangements, some edibles, or whatever it's called. <laughs> Why is it such a surprise to you? Because, because her child is in like six different places. They the give her probation. Like, what? What? I'm sorry, but what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I get, I, I get my bra back today. Yes. Yeah. That's the happiest I have. Uh, wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> Officer Troyer, can you call out inmate Collins? I need to speak with her out in the hallway. I sure can. Inmate Collins was ROR'd on her charges out of Bergen County today. However, uh, she does have a detainer out of uh, Gloucester County. She has a detainer out of Morris County and Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. So there's no way that she's leaving today. <laughs> Collins has apparently misunderstood a key component of her plea deal. You'll be released today, ROR, no dollar amount, unless something else is holding you. Collins does not realize that her plea deal only applies to the charges she accrued in Bergen County. And she will, in fact, be released from custody in Bergen County very soon. Oh, my God, I'm going to get hair dryer. <gasps> oh, my God. Oh my hair. <laughs> but as long as she has warrants in other counties, the jail is required to hold her until the authorities from the next one on the list pick her up. I'm going to notify her that she's not going to be uh, leaving today uh, and uh, that they'll, they'll come pick her up. I don't have an exact pickup time, but, uh, but she will not be leaving today, unfortunately, for her. Collins! Lieutenant Russo would like to talk to you. Okay. Hi, Hello. Ms. Collins. I'm Lieutenant Russo. I'm in charge of the uh, jail records unit. Okay. Uh, you're not going to be leaving today. We have uh, detainers out of uh, Gloucester County, Morris County, and Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. Oh. So we notified Gloucester County uh, that you're ready to be picked up and they'll come get you. Okay. Okay? All right. All right? Sure. That's all. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Not going anywhere. Oh. I'm going to Gloucester County tonight. See? That's probably why they are you. Not going anywhere. I'm going to Gloucester County tonight. Wait, 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 I'm coming out, I'm coming out. I'm going to Gloucester County tonight. They said all of my things were wrapped into one. All of them for Bergen County? No, all of them for, that's what my lawyer said, like all, all of the things that are against me right now were run concurrent. Why didn't she tell me this? They give it a lot. My lawyer. Are you sure you didn't misunderstand? It was just the Bergen County that got Yeah, because but why happened to Why didn't she too. know about the other stuff? It doesn't matter. It's just another step. Got that little goth baby. <laughs> Later, her attorney told us that Collins was fully informed that the deal applied only to Bergen County and that she must have simply misunderstood. Got that pen? I want to put some eyeliner on. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm happy for you, baby. Well, hopefully I'll stay here tonight and then I'll leave tomorrow or something. That would suck. We'll talk. We will talk. Less than 24 hours later, Collins has changed back into the dress she was wearing when she was booked into the Bergen County Jail. But she's also in cuffs and shackles. An officer escorts her to a waiting van from the Gloucester County Sheriff's Office, where she will face new charges for fraudulently obtaining prescription drugs. Due to mature subject matter, viewer discretion is advised.
Investigators are trying to figure out what prompted a man to start shooting at police in Hackensack. Any crime involving law enforcement, we take a little more personally, especially when somebody's being shot at. A police shootout leaves a paroled inmate in the hospital with 14 bullet wounds. And two other men are arrested for the connection to him. I mean, I didn't shoot the cop, but I sold the gun. He had this thought in his head that he wanted to, to kill himself. Suicide by police, basically. Oh, look at her hair. A female inmate arrives with what she says is a hair salon mishap. That process, like, chemically didn't work with me. My hair fell out. No. But officers suspect something else. Yeah, that'll be a good story. Oh, yeah. There's got to be a story behind that. Oh, definitely. That. city skyline is visible from some parts of town. Hackensack, New Jersey is a smaller, quieter city of about 43,000. But like its giant neighbor, it attracts visitors from all over. And that's especially apparent at an imposing landmark just outside downtown, the Bergen County Jail. North Carolina, baby. We gotta, we gotta get a we got, man. we got the dirty south in here, North dirty, Carolina. Dirty. Yeah. Ain't Trent. nobody that's in this county from this county. No, that's right. crazy. I'm from Trent, New Jersey. Ready to go home. Been here too long. 65% of our population are out-of-county residents. A lot of them are for drugs. Whether they're going into the city or coming out, they're getting pulled over. Uh, they use Bergen County because it's artery of highways down the eastern seaboard. So a lot of those individuals are incarcerated here. Most of the roughly 900 inmates housed here have been accused of crimes under a waiting trial or the resolution of their cases. Like many, Deanna Collins is not only from... Uh, I don't seem to think that I'm that, but I guess I'll find out. All right, Deanna Collins. This is the first time she's been in our jail. Um, she's got quite a few charges, you out of county and out of state charges as well, all pretty much for the same thing, of obtaining CDS by fraud. Quite a few, actually. We have one, two, three, about 15 with one town alone, three with another town. But she also has some out of county here. She is wanted out of Pennsylvania. Oh, look at her hair. Officers have seen this look before, usually on suspects charged with scamming pharmacies, just as Collins has been. Probably shaved it. So maybe when she went to the pharmacy to obtain the drug, she put her hair up, made it look like she was sick, perhaps losing her hair, maybe chemotherapy. Interesting. We'll have to ask her about that when we go see her. Classification is an ongoing process at the jail, as new inmates arrive every day. Today, they include Jerry Nunez on the left and Sean Stark on the right. Arrested within hours of each other, they have been connected to a shootout with Hackensack police two days earlier. The investigators are trying to figure out what prompted a man to start shooting at police in Hackensack. Officers say the man was walking with a gun and opened fire on a cop car, barely missing the officer inside. The shots caused another patrol car to rear end the first car. Both officers jumped out, returned fire. They chased the gunman to the corner of First and Sussex Street. That gunman has since been identified as 22-year-old Robert Leonardis. He's in the hospital in critical condition tonight. Robert Leonardis received a total of 14 bullet wounds. He has been charged with several crimes, the most serious being three counts of attempted murder. Face the camera right here in the open, no more. Stark was not arrested for any direct involvement in the shooting, but because he owned the unregistered handgun Leonardis allegedly used to shoot at police. He says Leonardis is a good friend and had taken the weapon without him knowing it. He had came over my house and we were hanging out that night and um, he had this thought and he said that he wanted to, to kill himself, basically take his own life. I talked to him about that this is not his last chance. There are things that he can do to better his life. But that night that he was over my house, he took my gun. It's basically how it got from my possession to his possession. I never thought that he would shoot at a police officer or even, it's just, uh, I don't know, I have really no, no words. 
so are you? Though Stark is not accused of being involved in the shooting, he still faces a serious charge. Simply due to the fact that he owned the gun used in the shooting, he has been charged with possession of a handgun while committing a crime. He says he will plead not guilty when he goes before the judge. Hello? I've been trying to call your phone. Why aren't you picking up? If found guilty, Stark could face up to 20 years in prison. But for now, he turns to his girlfriend for support. Listen, okay. They, they hit me with possession of the, the firearm and shooting that officer, babe. You have to give me a look. I'm serious. You have to see what lawyer can come here and talk to me ASAP because I'm going to lose my mind. And please promise me that you, you'll be faithful to me. They're going to smoke me for this and I do not deserve to be in prison. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jerry Nunez, who says he sold the unregistered gun to Stark for $500, is settling into his new cell. It's crazy, right? Just last night, I was watching Lock Up on TV. Now I'm on Lock Up for real. Woke up this morning to banging on the door, and uh, it turns out to be detectives from the Bergen, Bergen County Prosecutor's Office. And um, they wanted to speak with me. They had questions uh, with... Uh, a shooting of a cop. I mean, I didn't shoot the cop, but I sold the gun. And um, that's why I'm here. No towel, nothing. Don't come to this hotel. Somewhere else, Philadelphia. She's also facing drug charges, but she's unique in another way. And what happened to your hair? Ugh, really? <laughs> it was a process, and it fell out. It's it was horrible. a process? Yeah, chemical just fell out. <laughs> At the beauty parlor? Yeah. Um, I had a chemical treatment. I was supposed to be doing body wave and changing my hair color, and they ended up singeing off my hair. like this, I look like That's such a scumbag, and I look like such a, like, not the kind of person that you want to pull for. <laughs> Looks like it hurts. It does. It hurts my pride. It hurts everything. <laughs> Colin says things got worse soon after. She was arrested on multiple counts of obtaining prescription drugs through fraud, distributing prescription drugs, and forgery. She has pled not guilty, but admits to having done some of the things for which she is charged and to battling addiction. Prescription painkillers, they were my biggest thing, oxycodone. Um, when I couldn't get that, heroin. But I never shot it, I always just snorted it. Collins says she was coerced by a drug dealer to use stolen doctor prescription pads in order to obtain oxycodone from pharmacies in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. I barely see myself in that. Just, I'll walk in there as if I have something that's legitimate, and it's not. And then they fill it, they give it to me because they trust me. And I walk out. Why do they trust you? I'm nice and sweet and pretty, normally. <laughs> but it's something that, uh, you know, I'm not proud of or anything at all. Collins says she sold some of the pills and swallowed the rest. This is her first time in jail. She is currently in A Block, a temporary housing unit for new inmates. Their backgrounds must be reviewed by the jail's classification team in order to assign them to an appropriate housing unit. They could either classify me as C or D. C is maximum, D is minimum. Um, I don't know what the categorical processes of that is, but hopefully I don't go to C, because C is more the quote-unquote hardened criminals of the female world, I guess. Uh, Guys, they don't got ready for you. Though Nunez was investigated for his connection to the gun, Law enforcement authorities have yet to issue any weapons charges. When they came into my house, they did like a little search. They were looking for guns. And um, all they found was a pot, pot of weed and like 70 grams of bath salt. And that's about it. Nunez was only charged with drug possession, to which he plans to plead not guilty. But he believes prosecutors are building a case against him related to the police shooting. I just regret it, you know what I mean? It's not even worth it. Trading uh, 
45 caliber, $500 for uh, 10 foot, 10, what is it, 9 by 7. And now in jail for less than four hours, Nunez faces another demon, drug withdrawal. I mean, I have a bad addiction with painkillers. Tomorrow I'm going to be feeling it. It'll probably wake me up in the morning. Throwing up, puking, sweating. I kind of feel sweaty right now. <laughs> Coming up. We will tell you that first time, we will tell you that second time. A third time, we'll put your stuff out in the gate, and you got to go. Jerry Nunez receives a warning. And... You're telling me that bald head there wasn't to put a bandana to go into a pharmacy? No, not at all. Deanna Collins faces skepticism about her hair story. <laughs> Inside the Bergen County Jail, it has been a difficult first night for two men connected to a handgun used in a shootout with Hackensack police officers three days earlier. Jerry Nunez says withdrawal from painkillers has caused frequent vomiting. I'm just trying to stay positive, sleep it off. Every now and then throw up. Just let it out, drink a lot of water. That's all I can do. Though Nunez has had a brief stay in jail before this, his cellmate Santos Roman believes he needs a refresher course in jailhouse.